Hey DIYers, Jared with Alarm Grid here. Today we're going to talk about if you can use a Honeywell 5853 uh, glass brick detector with the 2 gig GC3 system. Uh, the answer is yes. You can definitely use a Honeywell 5853 glass brick detector with the system because um, it is meant to be able to work with uh, Honeywell 5800 series sensors. Now, <clears throat> um, when you go ahead and program a uh, 5853 glass brick detector into the GC3, you want to make sure that you are testing it as well, just to make sure that this sensor is picking up um, any glass breaking, make sure that it's working correctly. Um, if you wanted to go ahead and do that, you can use the Honeywell um, FG701 glass brick detector simulator. Um, there are a couple others uh, that are available as well. If you want to go check that out, uh, just could take a look at our view, uh, at our webpage, <laughs> and uh, we have a couple uh, available. But uh, you want to go ahead and use that glass brick detector simulator to make sure, again, that the sensor is working. So as a side note about using the 5853 glass brick detector, um, it is actually compatible with the Honeywell and 2 gig version of the Qualsys IQ Panel 2 Plus. Um, so if you ever had any of those existing around the home, you wanted to look at a Qualsys system, you can go ahead and use the Honeywell and 2 gig version of the Qualsys panel. Now, before you go ahead and set up any other Honeywell 5800 series sensors with um, the Qualsys IQ Panel 2 Plus, or even the 2 gig GC3, you want to go ahead and check the RF compatibility doc to make sure that that sensor is listed um, within that list. Because if it's not, then unfortunately it won't be compatible. So you want to make sure that you're checking that list before you go ahead and set up any uh, Honeywell 5800 series sensors. So if you wanted to go ahead and uh, program the Honeywell 5853 sensor with a 2 gig GC3, you're just going to follow these simple steps. So on the main screen, um, at the top right, you're going to look for the 2 gig logo. Uh, if you just tap on that, it's going to bring up a keypad. Um, so this is going to put you into the installer toolbox menu. Uh, now, in order to be able to access it, you will need the installer code. Uh, the default installer code for this system is 1561. So then it's going to take you to a couple of different options here. You're going to go into system configuration, and then you're going to go into wireless zones. And it's going to show uh, all your current zones and everything. Now, if you have any current zones programs, um, they are going to show up as uh, bold, uh, basically black. They can let you know that these zones are uh, being used at the moment. And then any zones that are not being used, they're going to be in gray and they're going to be a little bit transparent. So at least you'll be able to tell which zones are not being used. So for this instance, uh, zone two is not being used. So we're just going to uh, go, we're going to hit the down arrow to get to it, um, and then you're going to press edit zone. So now it's going to take you to the next window uh, to be able to program a sensor. So on the left side, these are all the options or all the different settings you can set uh, to be able to program that certain sensor. And on the right side, it's going to show you the uh, different prompts to be able to um, set those settings. So first, we're going to start in sensor type. Um, so this is basically choosing if this is going to be like a door contact which is going to be set up as an entry exit zone or maybe a motion detector, anything that is going to be set up as a perimeter zone, um, etc. So for this instance, normally glass brick detectors or Honeywell 5853 glass brick detectors are normally programmed as perimeter sensors um, so that if, the, if these were um, ever tripped, it's going to immediately trigger the alarm. Um, you don't want to have an entry exit uh, delay on this so that if, if anybody were to break that glass, then you have the countdown going on in the system and it's just, it's not going to trigger the alarm until much later. So for this instance, if you want to program it to perimeter, um, you can either type in the two digit number uh, for that specified sensor type, or you can hit this little uh, menu button right here and it'll bring a drop down. So <clears throat> for this, we're just going to tap perimeter. If you knew the two digit number, it's just zero three. Once you're done with that, you can just hit the down arrow, it takes you to the next area. So this is equipment code. Um, this is basically determining which sensor this is. Um, so if you know the equipment code, you could just type it in here, or you could just hit the menu button as well. And you're going to have a lot of different options. So for this, you're going to scroll until you see the Honeywell 5853. And as you can see, it is 0519 Honeywell Glass Break 5853. Um, so once you've found that, then you're just going to hit the down arrow to go to the next screen and then it's going to be serial number. So there's two ways of doing this. You can either uh, manually type in the serial number, which is 
most of the time located on the inside of the glass brick detector. Uh, there's going to be a sticker right there. This is the full serial number, or you can auto enroll the sensor. If you uh, wanted to auto enroll the sensor, you're just going to press the learn button and the system will go into a learning mode. For this instance, we're just going to do the auto enroll uh, option. So whenever you have a glass brick detector and you're trying to auto enroll it, there's two ways of doing so. Um, you can either hit the tamper button to have the system pick up the tamper switch, or you could just um, either insert the battery uh, so the panel can pick it up, or if you have a battery tab, you just pull the battery tab so it connects the battery and it does the same exact thing. So we're going to put it in learning mode, and now it's listening. So as I said, you can either hit the tamper switch or just put in the battery. Sometimes it doesn't pick it up immediately, so let's just do it again. There it goes. All right. So sometimes you may have to do it more than once. It happens every now and then. But um, when you are auto enrolling a sensor, you just want to make sure that you are matching up the serial number that shows with the serial number that's um, displayed on the sensor. So right now it's uh, 0573086. We have 0573086. So this is the correct sensor. So once you've uh, confirmed that, you're just gonna press accept, and this is gonna uh, save the settings. Now, just keep in mind, um, very important is whenever you, if you go ahead and program a glass brick detector using the tamper switch, sometimes um, <clears throat> for the loop number, because that is very important, sometimes the loop number would change um, and to, to the loop number that would work for the tamper switch. But, um, you want to make sure that it is the correct loop number to be able to work with the glass brick detector. So for instance, um, the glass brick detector uses loop number one. Um, the tamper switch would sometimes default to loop number four. So you want to make sure that it's correct when you're programming the sensor. But for now, um, once you've confirmed that the serial number is input, you're just going to hit the down arrow. You're going to go to smart areas assignments. Um, this is Basically setting up the glass brick detector to a certain partition. So if you have uh, partition one, partition two, however partitions you have, whichever one is set it up to, this is where you're gonna do that. Once you've done that, you're gonna hit the down arrow to equipment age. Uh, this is basically um, telling the system whether this is a new glass brick detector or an existing one. Um, for this, we're just gonna keep it on new. And then as I said, the sensor loop. So. Um, for the glass brick detectors, you want to make sure it's loop one. If you did enroll it with a tamper switch, sometimes it could be set to loop four, which there is no loop four showed right here, but sometimes it could do that. But we're just going to keep it on loop one. And then transmission delay, which is the next option. Um, this is basically a delay period for um, sending out the alarm transmission. So um, if this glass brick detector were to be tripped, uh, if you have the transmission delay set, it won't send out any signals for about 30 seconds. If you have it disabled, then it'll immediately send out that signal. Um, we do sometimes recommend uh, keeping it on enabled. Um, it is really up to you, whichever one you want to set it to. But for this, we're just going to keep it enabled. Voice descriptor. This is uh, basically just uh, setting whatever you want this uh, the sensor to be named or the zone to be named. Um, you can set up to about six different uh, descriptors for that zone. Um, so for instance, like this one, let's say we're going to throw this to the living room. So what you could do is just press edit voice descriptor and you could just type in the word living. It's going to automatically pull up the word for you. So you could just tap on it and then let's type in room. See how it automatically pulls it up. Uh, let's say living room glass break. You can see it pulls it up again, glass break. So we're at four. If you wanted, you could set two more words for it uh, to describe it a little bit further. Once you're done with that, you're just gonna press save and then we're gonna take it back to this to the, to the previous screen. So once you've confirmed that, you're gonna hit the down arrow and then you're gonna go to sensor reports. Um, this is whether you want this uh, sensor to be able to report out to the central station. So, <clears throat> Um, basically, if you don't want it to, to send out any signals, if it were tripped, you would disable it. If you wanted to, then you would keep it enabled. So for this, we're just going to keep it enabled. 
So next that we have is sensor supervised. Um, so this is uh, for the system to detect whether the sensor is communicating properly to the alarm system or if there's an issue and the sensor is not communicating back to the panel. So uh, normally the panel will send out a signal to the sensor uh, to be able to see if that sensor is okay. If the sensor is not communicating, then it's going to uh, trigger a supervision loss on the panel and let you know something is going on. Um, if the sensor is fine, then it's not going to do anything. It'll just act normal as it would. So uh, if you want it to be able to be supervised, you'll just keep that enabled. If you don't want it to be supervised, you'll just disable it. Um, but normally you want it enabled, so we're just going to leave that enabled for now. And then lastly, we have center chime. Um, so if you wanted this sensor to um, set off a chime on the system or any uh, voice enunciation, if the sensor were to be tripped, then you can set up a certain chime. Um, you have different options right here to choose from. You can do voice only. Uh, you could do ding dong. Uh, <laughs> you could do ding ding. A couple of different things on here that you can choose from. Um, but normally for a glass pick detector, you just want to keep it disabled because this is set as perimeter. You want this to uh, basically let you know if the glass is breaking. It's not going to be like a normal door contact where you would like to normally hear whether that door is open or not. Uh, so for this, we're just going to keep that disabled. And once you're done um, going through all of these settings, um, you can either press back to zones. Um, you can hit <clears throat> uh, the skip arrow to be able to take you to the next zone to go ahead and start programming that. Or you could just press return to system configuration. So for this, we're just going to tap on that. It's going to take you back to this menu. And to go ahead and save the options or discard it or anything like that, you can hit the back arrow. And it's going to bring up this window. So this is going to show you all the different settings you just set for this glass brick detector. Um, we did set it as perimeter. We've gone through all the different options for the, set, for the loop and everything. Once you confirmed everything is good, you could just press save. If you want to go back to the programming for this, you can press go back. Or if you just want to discard everything, you just press discard um, and not save any of the options. But for this, we're going to press save. Once you do that, take it back to the main screen. It's going to do a quick uh, reboot and um, now your center is successfully programmed. And that answers the question uh, whether a 5853 glass brick detector works with the 2GIG GC3. If you have any further questions about the 2GIG GC3 or alarm systems in general, please contact us at support at alarmgrid.com or go to our website, alarmgrid.com. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. If you have notifications of future videos, please click the bell icon. This is Jared with Alarm Grid. You have yourself a great day.